Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us. Unfortunately, we are not in person with you, but I hope that we will be able to share a bit of our experience in uh, trying to improve in how we get, uh, how we make Brazilian city policies accessible with our project. So let me introduce myself. My name is Hene. I'm a software engineer. I work with software development for uh, almost 20 years. I work with several different industries and I have a great experience with web scraping. Uh, Julio? Hi, everyone. So I'm Julio Carvalho. I am the Civic Innovation Project, uh, Program Manager at Open Audit Brazil, which is a civil society organization from Brazil, a chapter for the Open Knowledge Foundation. And I've been contributing to open source projects since 2018. And Querido Diario, the project we'll be talking about today, is a project that I've contributed since 2019. And I've been a maintainer for a long time, not as long as, as Henry, but let's go. Okay. Uh, so uh, a quick overview of what we will be talking in the next 30 minutes, we will talk about the issue, what problem we are trying to solve here in Brazil, and how our project, Querido Diario, will help with this problem. Uh, a bit of the technical overview of how it works, and some results that we got after we put this project in production. And also, uh, next steps, what we want to do to continue improving this project. Uh, so what's the, the main issue that we are trying to solve here? Uh, Brazil, we have uh, around more than 5,000 cities in Brazil. And uh, we, we want to have access to the decisions that our policymakers are doing. Uh, we, need, we want to track and, and know all the acts, all the decisions that they are making, the laws and the purchases, the contractions. So, and why is so difficult to access this decision? Uh, we have here uh, in 1862, it was the first uh, official journal or gazette, which is a document that uh, the imperial government at the time published with all the acts and the laws and everything that they do, and they decide uh, in in the in the country. And in the right, we have the same document from this year, 2024. Okay, more than two centuries, and the document is basically the same. Before it, uh, the document was printed. Right now. It is printed too, and some it's, it's still printed, but it's available uh, as a journal. And we need to get this information for each, each city has its own, and we need to get uh, this document for each city to try to understand what is happening in, the, in there. Uh, and what information we have here in this document? We have all the contracts, uh, if you are hiring a company for cleaning, a company for security, or to, to buy food for schools, to buy material for the schools, nominations, if I'm hiring teachers, if we are hiring um, people to help people in the Congress, or security, or lawyers, any kind of contraction that we have in the in the city, uh, procurement licenses, uh, what we want to buy to the city, uh, infrastructure uh, that we do. So everything needs to be in this document, and we have this for the cities and the states and, and the national government. And we have some challenges dealing with these documents. As I mentioned, uh, the, the structure of the document is basically the same that we have in the imperial era in Brazil, more than two centuries ago. Uh, and 
So we have an outdated and the format are not structured. And a main problem, especially nowadays, because it's impossible for someone to do a research and read all these documents. Uh, we have computers to search text inside the documents. But mostly the documents are in, in documents that we are not able to search easily. They are PDF files mainly. And so it's very laborious to find the information that we want. And there is no standardized metadata. There is no way to index. And there is no central access point. Each city has its own website, mostly some cities have in the same, but the majority has a different website where you need to enter there and try to figure out how to get the information and they are always working in different ways. So, and how we try to improve that. And this is how Querido Diario, in Portuguese is Dear Diary, uh, enter to Harrisburg and how this project will help us to, to solve this, pro this problem. Uh, we create a structure that scrapes all the documents from the web pages of the cities, most of them, not all yet, and put it all together and create a website, a point of access where everyone in the country can enter that access and do some searches to find the information that you want. Uh, you want to know if uh, some specific company was hired to do some project in one city. You can search for, for the company ID and see if it appears in one of the documents. If you want to know if uh, an infrastructure project uh, was done without following the standard ways of uh, hiring a company. We have something, we have a strict process to select companies by price, by experience to do some projects in the cities, but depending on the kind of project, we can get rid of all these regulations and hire directly. And this is a source of corruption sometimes. So, uh, we want to take a look to see if there is something uh, uh, to search and understand if, if, if there is a problem or not. So here is the, the interface that we have. You can search for style. You can search for terms and the city. I choose Porto Alegre, a city in the south, and a period of time for the specific keywords. And then I have access to all, all cassettes inside this period that has these uh, keywords. You can do search a bit more complicated. And then we can filter. And now we have uh, a small set of information so we can uh, read the real document and, and find the content. And okay, we solved this problem and how it works in a technical perspective. So we have, uh, this is a, a big overview of how it works, but we have the official Gazette webpage, each page of each city. We created some scrapers, we call spiders, because we use Python and the library called Scrapy that uses spiders as the name for the scrapers. We have one for each city that enters every day and gets the data, downloads the data of the city, mostly PDF files. So we have the raw files of the Gazette and we convert it to pure text. So we can, we are able now to do searches inside the content of the document. We also save some uh, metadata Edition number, city, some codes that we have, or some information that we have, and put all together inside the search engine index, where you can access. It's a database where you can access and do queries inside 
all the data that we have. And the good thing is that as it's a centralized for multiple cities, we can search from different cities at once and creates more complex searches. And you're not, you don't need to go city by city and do uh, a difficult search and read every document uh, as a PDF file. And together with some other data that we have from other public databases that we have, we have a public API that is used by us and is also open to anyone that wants to get access to this data for its own project and all needs. It can access this API, it's a public API, to select this information. And then we have our web platform, which I show with you. So anyone can access that and get the information that we need. This is a very big overview. And all of this is open source code. So everyone can access and look into that code and contribute to that code to help us to in increase the number of cities that we have, uh, fix the problems, improve the uh, capabilities of queries and certain. Okay. And, and how this works from a community building perspective. So I will let now Julio will continue from now and he will explain how this works with the community and everyone. Thank you, Anna. So Peter to the other is a big project with all right, just one second I'll see these web set itself off. Okay. Everything's fine. Ignore me. You're fine. I'm fine. You're fine. Sorry, you can start again. Sorry about that. Okay, so the Kiris Theater has this innovative architecture and it attempts, it's already complex enough to solve for one city and the Brazil has more than 5,000 cities and this is a gigantic, enormous uh, challenging uh, goal for for a project like this. So it can only be done. It it is only being done in with this initiative in the will how. So we focus we focus on five five main audiences to build a community around Kirito Diário, being creating the project creating the tools or using it or spreading information uh, while using the data. So they are academics, activists, journalists, public managers. And so the, I will show the main form of engagement we are dealing with those audiences. There are some intersection, but those are the highlights of how we are dealing with them and what we see as the 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 main uh, the main driver of their of their community. With academics and activists, we mostly do partnerships, and we, we create the program for it. We do the audio in universities, and we we achieve these partnerships a long lasting contact and they can spread their information and some things are integrated in Kirito Diary as well through research and development. It's a great way to to insert Kirito Diary in, in these fields and also have some feedback and contributions back to the project. The next uh, with journalists, we focus on small contacts, like a brief contact through workshops and mini grants. They can understand how to use the, the, the data and the, the tools that we offer and do their journalistic articles and spread their information. The data driven journalism is highly incentivized with Kirito Diario and our ability to cross data with other public data sets. So public managers, public managers, we usually focus on 
projects that can be used in the area of the source, but highlight or laser focus a specific issue that policy managers have. So the official gazettes have many different many different objects that are published there. Most of them are not published anywhere. So we can highlight some kind of contracts, some uh, some kind of procurement that can only be published in the official gazettes. And then the public managers that are interested in this kind of information can use that, that only that project to that consumes this kind of information that are to from the diario and that that's makes that makes the project much easier to adopt and developers they are the backbone of credit diario and we are the project is totally open source totally open data and we also believe that we have to provide the developers the chance to make a one-off contribution and have a high impact with that. So integrating their, their own city in Querido Diario is a is high-valued contribution that many people have done and the, their feedbacks are awesome. So what are the results for Querido Diario? And I will show us Mao a small section, a small amount of things we've done. What can summarize these years? With the uh, Creative Diary University program, we've done seven partnerships with research groups across uh, more, all, all from different states of Brazil. So it's around and the, the entire Brazilian population, the entire Brazilian country. More than 20 journalist task were uh, were monitored, were helped by us, and many others were done by third parties, and we did not have hand-to-hand -hand contact, but we could help more than 20 journalists to make their own articles. Uh, five out of five third party projects are using Querido Diario as a data source. Our community in Discord has more than 1,500 members, and the repositories of the project in GitHub have summed up, uh, summed up more than 1,000 stars. Our main project, our main repo, has more than 1,000 stars alone. And across the project, more than 100 people have contributed to the project. So. Um uh, our coverage right now is of uh, 402 cities. Uh, with, I told you, we, had, we aim to have more than 5,000. And this already provides more than, more than 500,000 publications in our database. So it's a massive data set. And one, little thing that only Kiddo DR is able to achieve by doing this in this broad search is detecting malicious files. So we've detected in our database one malicious file that was published in many years ago in one of those cities. Okay, so these are some of the uh, branches that Kiddo Diario has been done. They focus on thematics like the environment, like Diario do Clima, or technologies in education, like Kiddo Diario Technologies in Educação. So they are a filter on the entire official gazettes that Try, try to just get information that is associated with their themes and provide some alerts for journalists, for public managers that want to have interest in that team, in that theme, and wants to be in constant update of what is happening in the cities that they are monitoring. Also, the Querido Diário Universities 
project ha program has achieved some things like this this program that that develops that monitors nominations and exonerations in a in most all, all 99% of the cities in a state of, of Brazil, Alagoas. And also we have uh, helped some, some students publish, uh, you can pass the slides. Uh, help some students publish some articles with the, in the uh, program, extension program in the right and in the left, we also developed internally with our team some articles like the, that one for inclusive education for deaf people. Querido Diário. So, Querido Diário is recognized from various, various sources. We are showing quickly some of the of the articles that I already talked about Querido Diário. You can you can pass. Yeah, so these are some of them, and Querido Diário is also recognized by the DPGA, the Digital Public Goods Alliance, and the UNPD, the United Nations Program for Development. And uh, uh, it was highlighted at the Nobel Prize Summit and for a, as a public good for com, uh, combating disinformation last year so you can you can pass now and we also have Querido Diário being used as a source of information these are third parties doing their articles using the data from that they used Querido Diário to to Source the the articles. These are some of journalistic groups in Brazil. Oh, this is Intercept Brazil that just recently made uh, an article based on the tragedy, the disasters that ha that happened in Porto Alegre because of of water and excessive rain that caused caused floods, and then we they were investigating the the role of the of the city council Sorry, it's good with like coming up a minute the to wrap up, but, uh, okay okay it's already ending so and right now we are we are trying to restructure the the project to achieve the thousands of cities and we have to do that a lot in the in the infrastructure of the project and, and also crossing the data with other the public data sets to enrich that and allow for a, a more enriched, more complete experience when using Querido Diário with other data that is available. And that's it. You can check it out, the project, and you can also support the project financially. It's very, very, very useful for us. Thank you.